Imagine for a moment a world of magic and danger. A world where some of us are burdened with the task of fighting curses while others live blissfully unaware of their existence. Now imagine being one of those cursed warriors, living in the shadows, protecting those who don't even know you exist. Welcome to the life of Ghetto Suguru. You may know him as the villain, the ruthless curse users, the man who declared war on all known sorcerers. But have you ever wondered how he became this way? How a promising Jujutsu sorcerer turned into a symbol of nihilistic extremism? <laughs> Welcome to this journey where we delve deep into the abyss of despair, radicalization, and the human psyche. Let's peel back the layer of the story you thought you once knew and discover the profound and psychological transformation that gave rise to one of Jujutsu Kaisen's most complex and most misunderstood villains. Get ready because this isn't just a character analysis. Guided by psychological and philosophical frameworks, we are going to explore how life can betray us, how hope can turn into despair, and how heroes can lose their way. This is the story of Keto Suguru, the man who was not born a villain but rather betrayed by life itself. Hi guys, it's Yume, and I also recently have a new section called the Villains Corner, where I focus on dissecting the psyche of iconic villains across anime. Betrayed by life. Here, we're not just talking about a series of unfortunate circumstances. We are discussing deeply rooted cynicism born out of disillusionment with the human condition. A cynicism that pushed him into the spiraling descent into darkness. A prodigy of Jutsu, Ghetto was once an empathetic and understanding individual, but the tragic events he witnessed led him to develop a deep resentment against the non-sorcerers whom he viewed as the cause of sorcerers' deep suffering. This ideological transformation is paramount to understanding Ghetto's character. Ghetto's descent into nihilism was first prompted by the tragic death of Riko Amana, a young girl he and Gojo had been trying to protect. He discovered it was actually the humans, specifically those of non sorcerers religious cult, who had ordered Riko's execution, despite her being a mere child. This event prompted Ghetto's disillusionment with humanity, combined with the knowledge that essentially, cursed spirits are born out of normal humans or non-sorcerer humans excess negative energy. And if that there are no non-sorcerers out there, no cursors would have been born. So when Gato was asked by Yuki, do you hate non-sorcerers? Gato answered truthfully, logically, understandably. He answered, And then, his friend, Haibara, a fellow Juju sorcerer, was killed when battling a cursed spirit. Gato considered in his mind what is the meaning of his act of heroism in protecting the weak. The protecting this non shamans. This marathon called shamanism, being sorcerer. 
その果てにあるのが仲間の屍の山だとしたら。And the straw that breaks the camel's back is when the whole village of non-jutsu sorcerer cruelly tortured two little girls who have jujutsu power essentially conducting a witch hunt, blaming these girls for incidents that were caused by cursed spirits, while in reality it is those non-sorcery humans who actually caused these cursed spirits to exist in the first place. So when he saw that, Gato snapped. The accumulation of this incident shattered his work view. And resulted in him conceiving an extreme form of hatred towards the non sorcerers. This event, coupled with his growing resentment over the unjust treatment of Jujutsu sorcerer, contributed significantly to his dark transformation. Nihilism, in its broader sense, is a philosophical belief that life is without its objective meaning. Purpose or intrinsic values. It's the rejection of all religious and moral principles, often in the belief that life is fundamentally meaningless. For Ghetto, the nihilistic perspective was born out of the cruel reality that he faced a world where those with power suffered. While the ignorant lived in peace, he saw no intrinsic value in such life, rejecting the inherent worth of non sorcerer humans and, and considering them less than humans or even as curses themselves. Applying nihilism to Ghetto's character is a direct reflection of his adapted worldview following this traumatic incident. His rejection of previous moral principle is evident in his transformation from a Jutsu sorcerer who is supposed to protect non sorcerer into a being who actively seeks their eradication. His life, once aimed at helping others, now sees no purpose beyond executing his destructive plans. Furthermore, Gato's belief that sorcerers are cursed by the very humans they are supposed to protect showcases this perception of life can be cruel, unending cycle of suffering for those born with power. Moreover, the essence of Gato's fall from grace is also indicative of a deep seated existentialist crisis. Existential psychologists often talk about this meaning in life and how it's crucial for human happiness. For Gato, his meaning was shattered, replaced by a nihilistic worldview where he concluded that humanity was a curse that must be eradicated. <laughs> Now, let's talk about his curse technique as a metaphor. Gato's unique curse manipulation technique requires him to swallow the curse's whole, effectively ingesting the curse energy. This process, while integral to his power, is far from pleasant. Described as eating cloth of vomit, the vile taste serves as a visceral, constant reminder of his role as the absorber of society's detestable aspect, a role he perceives himself to be compelled into due to the circumstances of his life. It's essential to note the symbolic significance of this process, the act of swallowing curses is almost representative of of how Gato feels compelled to consume or internalize the darkness of society, its injustice, its violence, its ugliness. Gato literally eating society. 
Is he eating the curses or are the curses eating him? Because after all, we are what we consume. Psychologically, this have a detrimental impact on his mental health. The act of physically ingesting something that can be described as something so unpleasant lead to feeling of disgust and self-loathing. He may feel increasingly distanced from a normal human experience, leading to a further alienation. The daily physical reminder of what he perceives to be a systemic societal failure may further fuel his anger, despair, and disillusionment with the world. Gatos drastic transformation from a passionate jujutsu sorcerer to a nihilistic extremist who wants to eradicate all non-sorcerers can be shocking. However, from a psychological perspective, it can be explained using several concepts, including cognitive dissonance, radicalization, and moral injury. Let's break it down. Cognitive dissonance is a psychological theory positing that individuals seek to maintain a consistency among their beliefs, values, and perceptions. When there is conflict or dissonance between them, individuals often experience discomfort and will attempt to reduce this dissonance and regain their equilibrium. This involves often changing one's beliefs or perception to align with their actions and circumstances. In Gado's case, the discrepancy between his ideal as a jutsu sorcerer and the cruel realities he faced of the world might have created a significant cognitive dissonance, pushing him towards an ideological shift to reduce this discomfort. And the second concept is radicalization. It's the process where individuals who feel marginalized or prosecuted adopt extreme beliefs and justify extreme actions to rectify perceived injustice. Ghetto, burdened with the responsibility of dealing with curses and confronted by the indifference or ignorance of non sorcerers towards the dangers and difficulties he faces may feel alienated. This sense of injustice and alienation can catalyze his radicalization process, leading him to adopt an extreme ideology of eradicating all non-sorcerers. And the last one is moral injury. This is a term used to describe the psychological and social spiritual harm people feel after they fail to prevent or after they witness or learn about an act that transgress deeply held moral beliefs and expectations. Witnessing the deaths of innocent people and comrades because of curses and his inability to change the status quo despite of his best efforts caused a significant moral injury. This could let Ghetto to reject his previous beliefs completely and adopt an entirely new belief system that align with his experiences. So it's essential for us to understand that our belief system isn't stagnant. They are influenced by our experience, our interactions with the world around us. Ghetto's experience push him into a dark path, and the hardship and despair he experienced create a fertile ground for his extreme beliefs to take root and flourish. In conclusion, it's essential to understand that Keto Suguru was not inherently a villain. He was once a jujutsu sorcerer with noble intentions and genuine care for his comrades. His character arc serves as a stark reminder of how circumstances, how experiences, and psychological factors can radically alter a person's beliefs and behaviors. Gato's story is a tragic tale of a hero who was betrayed by the very world he sought to protect. 
his radical shift from a promising jujutsu sorcerer to a nihilistic extremist was not born out of his inherent evil, but as a consequence of experiencing despair, injustice, and disillusionment. His story serves as a grim reminder of the profound impact of our experiences and the psychological responses to them can have on our beliefs and actions and how in the face of despair even heroes can lose their way anyway guys it's a long video if you made it this far thank you so much guys for watching if you have any opinions please leave it down in the comments below i would like to hear your thoughts and remember please help to support my channel like this video and subscribe to my channel see you next time bye, -bye.